In order for extremists to succeed, they need to recruit others to their cause. And young people, in particular, represent a valuable source of potential for them. Indeed, extremist groups often regard young people as easy targets. A young person can be influenced and shaped to suit the needs of the cause, and can be pressured to do things an adult might think twice about, from spreading messages of hate to committing acts of violence. The consequences can be very serious. But let's begin by asking a simple question. What does an extremist look like? Someone who dresses in Asian clothes. Guy with a beard. Um, someone who's aggressive. I suppose there's always these stereotypes about, you know, what extremists look like, but I think the scary thing is probably they could be anyone. Now take a look at this cross-section of people and see if you can point out the extremist or extremists from amongst them. Can you tell from the way they appear or the clothes they wear? Maybe it's the look in their eyes or maybe it's just gut instinct. It's very difficult to spot who an extremist is. Uh, it could be anybody within our communities, within society. People don't walk around with, with extremists written or, or labels on their foreheads. It's so difficult to spot. It's, it's, it's in, it generally, it's their views that they hold, and we only really see them that when those views turn into actions. Extremists aren't necessarily different. There's nothing really that marks them out physically or in terms of their style of dress or, or, or things like that. It's the views, the ways in which they think about the world that, that are different. It's their attitudes, it's their feelings about events in the world. That's what's different about them. It's, it's not what they look like or, or particular individuals. It's, it's how they think about the world. That's what's different about extremists. OK, so we know that you can't tell an extremist by his or her looks. However, when you hear the word extremist, what's the first thing you think about? Muslims. 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 Uh, Muslims. Most of the people that think about Muslim. If someone said to me extremist, I would say Muslim. No offence, sorry. Burn, burn, USA! 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 Islam is a peaceful religion. In spite of this, significant world events such as the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan or even the Palestinian-Israeli conflict have sometimes helped reinforce a sense of anger and injustice among some Muslims. Most, of course, are honest, law-abiding citizens. Even if they disagree with the government's actions, they behave in a moderate, rational manner. However, a minority seek ways of expressing themselves in a more radical way. Indeed, an even smaller minority take even more extreme measures. Islam is religion of peace. If you see someone who is violent and he claims that he's a good Muslim, don't believe him, okay? He is uh, a person who is um, a deviant, uh, an astray. Islam always calls people to peace. Don't believe him. Richard Reed, a Muslim convert, was sentenced in the United States after he admitted trying to blow up a commercial flight using bombs hidden in his shoes. Although there is no clear pathway to extremism, Richard's life can be compared to many others that have joined extremist groups. Someone who became an extremist is Matthew Collins. Matthew grew up in South London and went to school with Richard Reed. But Matthew became a member of two extreme right-wing groups, the National Front and Combat 18. He now spends his life fighting extremism, but remembers Richard from their school days. Well, Richard Reid, as I recall him, was in the year below me, um, was a very, very average, slightly put-upon, miserable kid. And I think he probably acted out what put-upon, miserable kids do when um, someone gets inside their head. It's, it's, Tragically and desperately sad, I was talking to one of his former teachers who just couldn't believe um, what happened to him. It's not only radical Muslims that seek to recruit new members to their cause. Anti-government groups, animal rights extremists and far-right groups actively seek new members as well. There are a number of different ways in which people are drawn in towards um, extremist positions. Uh, the internet's a big one. 
at the moment. The thing that we're interested in, though, that, that, that we've come across, is actually personal contact. In the media, there's a temptation to say that extremists are wild, fanatical kind of individuals. Actually, very often, the people who are most ex effective at recruiting young people towards extremists are very charismatic, engaging individuals, and that personal contact is, is, is very important in, in this process of, of developing and moving towards a more extremist viewpoint. They spent a great deal of time shaping me, uh, if you will, knocking out of me some of the things I liked. They, they reshaped me, they, they brainwashed me, if you will, I don't know. But again, I was quite... I wanted to, to have this happen to me, to make me a better person in their, in their eyes. So they knocked a few things out of me. They knocked some of the element of fun, some of the elements of a carefree, open... In a carefree and open lifestyle out of me uh, and shaped me into a different person that was still boisterous, was still uh, noisy, still quite humorous, but they changed my humour to my humour became instead of quite innocent 15 year old observations to becoming quite hateful and spiteful observations. I went from making the whole room laugh to just people, some people in the room laugh. Everything about my life was shaped to fill their model. In radicals I've represented, there's a passion in their speech, there's this absolute belief that shines out, and you don't stop and think necessarily whether they're right or wrong. For a while they're um, bewitching, as you hear how convinced they are. They've got a cause, and like people can be passionate in ordinary causes, in innocent causes, in sport, uh, following a team, but they are passionate in their beliefs in much more controversial areas. The common theme between being angry with an issue and taking an extreme view, or indeed being prepared to take extreme measures beyond what could be described as reasonable, is often termed as radicalisation. After 2001, after the events of 9-11, people thought that you could just profile and say there's certain types of individual who, um, who will drift towards extremism more than other um, types of Actually, the research says that's not true. The thing that moves people along a process of radicalisation, that moves them towards being extremist, is a number of different sorts of events that happen to them. So it's not the person, it's the situations that they go through that's important. Um, and these will be... Um, these will be events that have sort of emotional power and significance for them. I've represented a number of people who are considered by the courts to be radicals, whose views are so extreme, they're so far outside the mainstream thinking. They don't abide by the ordinary rules. They feel they're justified in going their own way and, and disregarding the ordinary rules. They don't have restraints. They feel they've got such a just cause that they can do whatever they want to achieve their aims. Matthew Collins was fortunate to see that extremism wasn't the answer to the problems he perceived as a young man. Indeed, he now spends his time fighting extremism at all levels. Others, however, have not been so lucky. Indeed, there are many that have been convicted of a variety of crimes after becoming radicalised. Some have even given their lives for their cause, but worse still, have taken the lives of innocent others to prove a point. So how do you spot those that have been radicalised or are in the process of becoming radicalised? And in fact, what should you do if you suspect an extreme individual or group is targeting you? It's actually very difficult to spot. Um, that, that this is happening because um, the, there's a process that's referred to as grooming. So, you know, someone will not just come up to you and say, hey, do you want to come along and be an extremist with us? It's a far more subtle, complex process that evolves over time in terms of how it happens. And this grooming process is, is um, quite sophisticated in how, how it works and the psycholo psychological dimensions behind it. Um, but, you know, if you listen to people and if they have a certain degree of intolerance in the way in which they talk about things, if they, they seem very inflexible in their viewpoints, they're not willing to listen to counter-arguments, and if they, they kind of have a very strong narrative um, that they apply across situations, 
you know, that's some of the things to just be, be mindful of and aware of. People can be groomed to having a, a particular point of view, generally speaking by the information that is presented to them. This type of information can be very emotional and extremists will use things that they know will hook that person into finding out more and more about that particular subject. Unfortunately, they become very, very emotionally attached and they think that what they're reading and what they see on the internet is factual and that's something they really should do something about to take action. So what do you understand about identifying someone who is vulnerable to extremism? How would you go about recognising extremist behaviour? Without naming names, have you ever suspected anyone of being an extremist? If so, what made you suspicious? And what do you think would be the appropriate action to take if you thought that you or a friend was being targeted? Oh.